It probably comes as no surprise that the majority of homes here in the UK rely on combi boilers for heating and hot water. But with the government's plans to phase out gas boilers due to their inefficiency, cost volatilities and emissions, what's next for UK homes? Well, you often hear us talking about heat pumps here on the show. And whilst we love them, they're not perfect for every household. So what are the alternative options? Well, one such option might be this, the Lathmore or Luthmore boiler. So we're here to find out more. And this is Everything Electric Tech. Our three free YouTube channels on EVs and clean tech are funded by our fun-packed Test Drive Tastic events in Farnborough, London, the South West, the North, Melbourne, and Sydney, and next up, Everything Electric Melbourne. And new for UK viewers, you can now buy a battery EV and much more at everythingelectric.store. Now, back to the episode. So this is the Luthmore or Luthmore boiler. It's a battery powered alternative to a combi boiler. And inside there are these six units. These are six LFP batteries. So LFP, like we see in electric vehicles, obviously really well known for their great thermal stability and long lifespan. But what's also great about that is how it aids serviceability and insulation. Because instead of lifting this huge, great big heavy unit onto the wall, you could put the unit on and then slide the batteries in one at a time. So definitely helping those installers not put any backs out, which we like to see. But on the subject of installing these, you can see from this governance under here, it's been extremely simplistic. So definitely not looking at the same upheaval that you might have with a heat pump alternative. However, it is worth noting that you will need a thicker or more suitable uh, mains cable to the consumer unit, but that isn't any different from what you'd expect to see with an electric shower anyway. So can you give us a sense of how does this work and how is it comparable to a combi boiler? Internally, we have a large, very power dense battery, which is storing the same amount of energy as a hot water tank and when someone turns on their hot water tap, our boiler detects it and uses the battery, stored energy in the battery, to heat up the water on demand at the power levels that you can achieve from a gas combi. But of course, you're also using electricity that was charged up potentially last night on cheap rate electricity, or indeed when the sun was shining, if you have solar panels. So we know that there is energy stored in there, but what does that actually mean in terms of a metric that maybe the, the average household could understand? Yeah, so, so we store the equivalent of about 138 litres of hot water. So it's seven kilowatt hours of energy, but in terms of hot water usage, it's 138 litres of hot water, and that's 60 degree hot water, so what you'd get in a water tank. So when that's cooled down or mixed with cold to your tap, to the end user, at 40 degrees, it's about 230 litres of hot water which for the average three to four person household is more than sufficient to do their sort of average daily needs. And if anyone would say to you, oh yeah, we've seen kind of heat batteries before, what would you say is different about this? So yeah, so heat batteries are same idea, they're storing energy off peak. The difference is a heat battery is storing heat. So it's a thermal store. So similar to a water tank, a water tank could be classed as a thermal store because you're storing energy as heat. We store energy in a battery as electricity. Um, we do store some energy as heat, so that's the otherwise waste heat during the charging. We hold on to that, so any energy that you have paid for and put into your product comes out the other end as useful heat. The main difference is, as a battery, we can deliver higher powers than a thermal store could, but also in terms of loss of energy over time, again, a water tank radiates heat, thermal stores will radiate heat. The only energy of ours that will be radiated is 15% of that total energy, which is thermal. So even if you lost all of that, that's still less than what you would lose in 24 hours from a standard water tank. And we often talk about increasing energy density when it comes to batteries, but how are you dependent on power density? Because this comes back to the problem with the um, amount of energy you can actually draw from the electricity mains, which is, for most houses, it's 100 amps, which is roughly speaking 24 kilowatts. But a fairly vanilla flavoured gas combi boiler will do 30 kilowatts quite cheerfully. 40 kilowatts are pretty common as well. So the challenge we've got is that we have to be able to deliver that power when somebody needs it. But unless you spend an hour in the shower, you don't need the capacity necessarily of a really large water tank. So we store the energy potentially off peak, deliver it at high rate, cooling the batteries as we do it. All the energy goes straight into the heating the water. 
So why is this preferable compared to, say, getting a home battery and using that to power an electric combi boiler? So home batteries are really great. I've got some myself. Um, the challenge is that it's back to the power density question. They're not particularly power dense. Even the best home battery is only, is only capable of around 10 kilowatts, which is exactly where you are with a mediocre um, electric combi boiler. And we need 30 kilowatts. So we needed to develop our own battery system to be able to do that. But that doesn't mean that the two technologies can't be used in concert. So for example, if you do manage to use, you might maybe have an hour long shower and you run out of your battery charge. Now we do switch over into mains power so you never actually run out of hot water as such, but you do get experience that drop in performance. But if you get out of the shower, there's no reason why our Luffmore cannot recharge using the energy that was stored in the home storage battery. It can all start to work as a system basically. We often hear this term in relation to heat pumps of coefficient of performance. Is there an equivalent metric so that we can understand how this compares directly to a gas boiler? So yeah, coefficient of performance is for a heat pump is usually above one. So for every kilowatt hour of energy you pay for, you can get two, three, four kilowatt hours of heat out at the end of it. We are a direct electric solution. So we have a coefficient of performance or an efficiency of no more than one. So the same as every other electric solution, we have one. Gas, however, is usually about 92% efficient. So gas is quite cheap to run, but actually efficiency-wise, we are more efficient with our energy than a gas boiler would be. What kind of homes are these best suited for? Do you have a particular market in mind? So the ideal market uh, for the Luthmore is the smaller properties that something like a heat pump is not necessarily the favoured option. So we, we deliver 30 kilowatts like a gas combi. Um, the only real um, kind of limiting factor is the 10 kilowatt central heating performance. Um, but a reasonably insulated property, that's more than sufficient to deliver home heating needs. Sometimes with a heat pump, they may come with a requirement to upgrade radiators and pipes supplying those radiators. Is there any of that requirement with this? So with the Luthmore, it, it runs like a gas combi. So the delivery temperatures are the same as a gas combi. So for your central heating, you can set between 40 and 80 uh, via the app. Same with hot water, you can set between 40 and 60. So critically, as you sort of said, that means you don't have to upgrade or change any of your plumbing or radiators. Is there a way that this can be really optimised? For example, if you get the right tariff or if you use solar or home batteries, what's the ideal setup? So yeah, obviously it's a on-demand sort of product, so it will deliver your hot water and your central heating on demand when you want it. But we have a battery, so we store energy. So the best time to store that energy is off-peak. So if you've got an off-peak tariff or like the EV tariffs um, or a time of use tariff, which means you can take advantage of cheaper energy. And as you said, with solar, we can take energy sort of freely from uh, your solar panels. So it, it will offset the kind of cost of electricity um, because you don't have to take it at peak times. So I think this might be a first for an Everything Electric Show episode, but why have we got two showers and what's going on? So on the left, we've got a standard electric shower, um, which is 10 kilowatts. So that's what you can draw from your mains without three phase or without us basically. So it just gives you an idea of the kind of performance that you could get when you don't have gas. So we've got flow meter there. So at your kind of 35 to 40 degrees that you'd expect uh, from your tap, we're at about 5.7 liters per minute. So then turn us on. Oh, a little bit more powerful there. So yeah, getting to the same temperature, we're up closer to sort of 10 liters per minute. But that, that is limited to the flow rate we've got here. It, it can go higher. Um, so if we go over to um, the boiler over here, so I got a lovely display there showing what it's doing. So it's doing central heating and hot water at the moment. So unlike a gas combi where it switches between central heating and hot water, because we've got a battery that can do your hot water, the mains can do the central heating so it can run both ah, at the same time. Okay. So while that's running, um, what we've got on the screen here can kind of see what's going on in the boiler. So cold water comes in. So this is our inlet temperature here. Yeah. So at the moment, the inlet temperature is quite high. So it's about 17 degrees. Before it then gets heated by the heating elements, we've got a thermal store in there. So that thermal energy is added to the water first. So you yeah. can see there's an increase. It's not much, but there's an increase of temperature to this tepid water temperature here before it then gets heated by the elements. So power wise at the moment, we're doing about 23 kilowatts out of the kind of 30 that are available. 
So that's interesting because presumably the higher the inlet temperature, the less hard it's having to work in there. Exactly. So we've got 138 litres equivalent storage, but that's assuming you have to heat water from 10 degrees to 60 degrees. If it comes in at 15 or 20, you, you have a lot less energy needed to heat it, which means the power you need is less. So if you then want to turn on other outlets, which we can do anyway, so we've got a tap here as well, you'll notice that the shower does drop in sort of performance, but it doesn't drop to that 10 kilowatts performance. You can have multiple outlets on. So yeah, the power will then go up or the flow rate will then drop depending on what's available. It's always trying to target that 60 degree temperature. So this is a really neat explanation of what's going on, but in terms of the app, what would a customer see? Basically, we've got a screen with the boiler in the middle, shows your charge. You've then got where water's going. So at the moment, we've got water going to your tap mm -hmm. and water going to your central heating. If we turn the taps off and turn the central heating off, it will then show the product charging. So I can literally do that now. So I'm turn off hot water and then we'll turn off the central heating. So once that sort of turns off, both the energy sort of usage, so from the mains and from the battery will stop, and then the product will then start charging again. So we can see here, ah, yeah. charge coming from the mains. So that's kind of the standard mode. It will just charge up once you've used energy, but you can set charge tariffs. So if you've got an off-peak tariff, it would then only charge at your off-peak period. That is a really handy way to really easily visualize where actually that energy is going. Absolutely. Why is it that we need such high power for showers? That's a really great question. And what a lot of people don't realise is how much energy it takes to heat water. Um, the, the universe gave us this magical um, material, material, this magical fluid, but it's really energy dense to actually heat. It takes 10 times the amount of energy to heat a kilo of water than it does to heat a kilo of steel. And if you want to do it quickly, you have to do it, it takes a lot of power. So whilst we know that a lot of electric technologies are much more efficient than their internal combustion engine or gas counterparts, we also know that sadly gas is cheaper than electricity. And of course there's an opportunity to use variable, you know, or time of use tariffs and all that kind of stuff to store electricity when the rates are cheaper. But ultimately, is this solution cheaper than a gas equivalent or is it dependent on pairing it with, say, something like solar and additional home energy storage? So the product was conceived uh, when the announcement was made about the phasing out of gas. So in a way, we're not competing with gas. We're not trying to compete with gas. Um, we can get close with the time of use tariffs that you mentioned, but fundamentally, this is moving forward, this is about giving people a, a solution which does not compromise the experience they're used to, which is that performance of really powerful hot water um, without needing a giant water tank in your house for homes that don't have room for a giant water tank, for example. Now, we know with things like the boiler upgrade scheme, they're largely targeted towards things like heat pumps. Is this eligible? And if not, what would your ask be to the government? So yeah, so boiler upgrade scheme is obviously amazing. It supports homeowners moving away from fossil fuels. Um, at the moment, we aren't on those schemes, but we are in engagement with government to sort of be involved in any available scheme that's there. We want to be involved in this sector as it evolves and, and how we best support those homeowners moving away from fossil fuels. I think the main ask is being technology agnostic. Heat pumps are an amazing piece of technology, but they aren't suitable for everyone. They are large, they take up a lot of space. So again, those smaller properties where a heat pump is not the most viable option, you kind of need to be able to incentivize and, and give homeowners the choice so that they can move away from gas to a product that is more suitable for the environment. The other thing that we know is available here in the UK is zero VOT on home batteries. This does have batteries within it, but is it eligible for that 0% VOT? So we are in discussions about that at the moment. Um, I know those are ongoing, but yes, as you say, there is a battery in there and batteries are considered for zero rated VAT at the moment. So in terms of installation and maintenance, how can someone go about actually living with one of these? So. It is a connected device, so the install is done via the app, so you commission via the app. Also, the end user can run it and control it via the app. Uh, but what that also means is a connected device is we get a lot of data from it. So all the batteries, what temperatures it's been run at, when it's been turned on. So we can kind of monitor the performance of it, but also if there's any kind of issues. So generally speaking, unlike gas, it's not needing a gas safe sort of service year on year. 
um, but things like filters and the MagnaClean filters that are pretty standard for your central heating or hardness of water, which where we are here, hardness is quite, quite high. Um, we would recommend that those are checked regularly, but in terms of an annual service, it, it kind of depends on you know, what we see in the product and what we monitor. And if we see there's an issue, we can get in touch with the user, most likely before they even know there's an issue and say, we recommend getting a install around to, to check my systems. If we're serious about using more clean energy, either stuff that we generate ourselves at home or stuff that's produced here in the UK, then electric technologies for heating and hot water are absolutely essential. And in fact, there are things like the Future Home Standard that already require new builds to have low carbon heating solutions and the restrictions will get even more in the future. Obviously, if you have just installed a gas boiler, we're not suggesting for one moment that you rip it out and replace it with a greener technology. But if that boiler is coming towards the end of its life, greener technologies are worth considering. And especially now that there are more and more different types of solution out there, like the Luffmore boiler. Now, one thing that we have identified today is that electricity is more expensive than gas. And that is a problem when, it's, when you start to do the economics on deploying some of these greener solutions. But with technologies that allow you to store that energy comes the ability to store energy when it's cheap and use it when it's more expensive. And in doing so, giving you much more control over your bills. What we've seen here today is a really cool and elegant solution, and especially if a heat pump isn't exactly right for your property and ensures that you can still have those lovely, hot, powerful showers. But that is all that we have time for today. We would love to know what you think about this episode, so please do leave us a little comment. Maybe like and subscribe whilst you're there as well. But that's it. If you have been, thank you for watching. Now visit electricvehicles.expert where you can follow everything electric and keep current with Clean Technica, The Driven, Electric and many more.